heat and it just is going to send voltage through your finger basically. And if you're lying, typically you'll start kind of sweating a little bit on your skin and so the, that, uh, the resistance will go down so the analog value will go up. And, um, and so that's, that's kind of the way this really simple lie detector works. So here's the code for it, really simple. I'm using the analog read pin 2. Um, then I'm just doing a serial begin. This is just a function that lets me output whatever is happening on the Arduino over serial. I can just do a serial print. Which then I do down the void loop. So I do a, a serial print of whatever I read in through the analog read. And, uh, and then I delay for five seconds. Then it's just going to keep reading. And so I can just watch that value go up or down. I can know what's, what's going on. Um, it's not perfect. Um, any, any emotional response will actually trigger you sweating like this. So if you're mad about what the person's saying or, or something like that, then you're also going to look like you're lying to these lie detectors. And also the, the professional ones all have things like they, they test for heart rate and, and breathing rate and things like that. Um, so here's another one that's, that there's a ton of people who make different versions of this. Um, so you, all you do is take a laser, you put it across a doorway, um, and then on the other side of the doorway you have a photoresistor that the laser is pointing at. And so when someone goes through that, that laser, it's going to change the value that's being read on that analog read to that photoresistor and it's going to, and it's going to show you that someone went through and you can buzz or do whatever you want to trigger on that person coming through. Um, Here's one that the follower talked about yesterday that he did, which this is one of the first projects that I made as well, actually going off of his plans. So this is based on the AVR project VUSB. Um, so it's a simple circuit. It has just three resistors, two diodes, and that's and then just the USB connector, and that's it. And you can emulate you, you can emulate a HID device. Uh, so you can do a, you can do a keyboard, and then when you plug it into a computer, it's not going to need any drivers. It's just going to work. And it can be modified to be like a, a joystick or a mouse or, or a lot of other devices. Um, so security uses for this, there's been a couple other talks. Um, Adrian Crenshaw and, and Fowler, they talked about this a little bit. Doing things like proof for, or uh, doing things like uh, you connect it to a computer and then when a person comes and logs in, then it can, you know, while they're turned away or something like that, then it can add a user really fast without them noticing. Um, I, another use that I thought about using it for was you hook it up to a kiosk, a computer that's in a kiosk mode, and have it just go through all the possible combinations of keys and try to break out of that kiosk mode. Um, typically in the past a lot of kiosk modes have special keys that they forget to exclude from being able to, to get to things in Windows or, or something like that. Um, but check out, like I said, check out uh, Adrian's or followers talk about this as well. They, they did some good stuff. So here's the schematic. It's, like I said, it's really simple. It's these three resistors, two diodes, and then the, the USB connector, and then to the Arduino. Um, and then the code, uh, basically, so you have to disable the, the built-in timers in the Arduino because USB uses different timing. And then you just connect as a USB device, and you just start sending keystrokes. So it's, it's super easy to do. Um, the next one that I, that I decided to do is I thought, or one of the ones I decided to do wasn't next after that one, I guess, but at some point in my life I decided to, to try to make an RFID emulator. It's actually, part of this was because I wanted to get Chris Padgett's from, that he was supposed to make after last DEF CON, but he never, never came out with it. So I thought, well, I'll see if I can make my own, see how hard it is. So I wanted to emulate 125 kilohertz um, RFID tag. Um, I didn't have an oscilloscope or any kind of antenna tuning equipment and I didn't have any plans to do it. So there's no, there was no, you know, here's how to make an RFID emulator with an Arduino or, or anything like that. There's some similar projects um, that gave me a lot of help, but, but there was nothing like right there so I could just take it and use it. And so this is what I ended up come up, coming up with. So this RFID tag spoofer, stupid simple, and, and a pack of day and make ended up picking it up and doing stories on it. So, so all it is is just a 10 kilo ohm resistor, a uh, transistor, 10 nanofarad capacitor, and then a spool of wire and a spent roll of toilet paper. So, and that's and the code is just 20 lines long. So it's really easy to make this thing. Um, so I'll actually demo it here in just a minute. But here's the schematic. Uh, so you have, and it, it didn't take me very long to figure this out either. It, I mean, I think it was like six hours or something like that. So these are actually really easy to make. Um, so it has the resistor going to the Arduino pin, then to the base of the transistor, then, then the emitter and the collector are connected to the, to the coil and also has that tuning capacitor that goes in between them. 
And so basically what happens is, you know, I've wrapped this antenna so it's at the right frequency and so the, the, uh, the RFID reader sends out a carrier wave and, and my antenna is tuned so that it will respond as basically a high whenever the, the RFID reader sends out the wave. But then what, what happens is with, the, with this transistor, when I put power to the base, it essentially connects those two ends of the antenna that are connected to the emitter and the collector. And so that detunes that antenna so it gives it a low signal so it's really easy to make this thing work. Um, so, so the code, um, so I just, I'm using pin 9, I just chose a, a pin, it doesn't matter which one you use. And I said it's going to be an output pin because this is the one I'm going to use to turn on and off the, uh, the antenna to detune it and tune it. And then I, I started out as low. And then so the way that RFID works, I just got this off of Wikipedia, it uses Manchester encoding. So this just means it has the clock, sim the, the clock signal and then it has the data and they get XORed and that's what you end up sending back. So that way the clock and the data is in, in one signal back. You don't have to have separate, separate ones when you're sending the, the data. So here's my, here's my main loop of my code. So basically I, I just define my, my data that I'm going to be spoofing. So you have to send it a bunch of ones so that it knows that you're a valid RFID or a valid RFID tag. You're not something just giving interference or something like that. Then you you start sending it the signal, uh, and so in this one I'm just doing all F. So I'm just doing you know four four ones, and then the zero is parity, and at the very end there's all those zeros, which is the column parity. So it has parity on the on the rows and the columns, um, and then it, and then I just call this this function that I've defined called set pin Manchester. And I just give it what the clock is and then what the data is and then it just does all the XOR stuff and, and it then changes the pin. I delay for 256 microseconds so I'm at 125 kilohertz and then I just keep repeating. So, um, so you just set the, so here's the, my Manchester code. So as you can see there I'm just, uh, I'm just XORing the clock and the signal to get my MAN encoded int. And then if that's one, I know that I should set that pin low because low is going to be high on the antenna because I'm not, I'm not joining those two ends, get detuning the antenna. Or I set it high and that detunes the antenna and then I get my, uh, you know, then it, it's going to give a low signal. So here I'll really quickly show how this thing works. So I'm just using, to demo this, I'm just using the Parallax RFID reader that Joe Grand developed. He just came out with a new one that's a reader writer. But, uh, and then here's my spool of toilet paper with wire around it. And you could just, you could, the antenna just has to be the right tuning so it doesn't have to be around a thing of toilet paper. But that's just what's easy for me to do. So here, here's my code. Um, and then, let's see. And that's the ID as well. Um, here's the, it has a built-in serial monitor so you can, you can do uh, serial stuff. So as you can see here, hold a tag up to it, it reads it. Hold another tag, it reads it. Then I'm going to hold this thing up and it's just doing all Fs, right? So and I, can, I can change that code, I can modify and it can do, you can, it can output whatever I want. And so I can emulate any ID with this with this uh, device. Close off. Okay. So now, now the next thing that, that I, well another thing to look at too is when you're building hardware devices is what other stuff can you interface with and so serial is a good way to interface with things because it's really easy to do, a lot of stuff supports it. Um, there's the, the digital I open zero and one are hardware serial pins so, so they're easy to connect to stuff. Um, there's also, so like this, this parallax reader uses serial. Uh, GPS units use serial, LCDs, various uh, integrated circuits, a lot of stuff uses serial. And the second one is I2C, which is, or I squared C, which is uh, analog pins four and five are built in I2C pins. This is what, you, this is a bus protocol, so you can have up to 128 individual devices on this bus. And each device has its own address, so that way, you know, you can interact with the one you want. So there's like the centipede shield, this is what it uses, which gives you a ton of I.O. I think it gives you an extra 64 I.O. per shield and you can stack them. 
Also, we numchuck it uses I2C and, L and L I have an LC that does either serial or I2C. Um, so you can connect the Arduino to whatever device you want and try to you know just send stuff over serial or listen over serial, what see what's happening, and figure out how stuff works. I actually used this to fix my neighbor's Seagate hard drive. It it looked like it was going dead, and so we I, I googled and found out it has a serial interface on the back of it, so I was able to connect to it and change and reset the the hard drive and that works perfectly now so it's, it's kind of interesting that even hard drives have that on them. Um, so like I said, Wii controllers and there's also an I2C scanner which will just scan everything on a bus, see what's there. So like I said, there's a parallax RFID reader. Um, it's a serial device. It runs at 2400 baud. Really easy to use. Here's the code for it. So basically with this one I wanted to be able to use the hardware serial to report back to the computer so I, so I ended up use, using uh, the new soft serial library which gives me basically bit being serial so I can use any of the digital I.O. pins to do serial. And so then I set up my, so this is, this is all the code right here so it's super easy to do. I include the new soft serial library. Um, I tell I'm going to use pins 6 and 7 for RX and TX and then I start up my, my my serial, which is the the new soft serial one, and I set up my serial, um, which is the hardware built-in one, and then I basically what, what I do is anything that comes in from the the new soft serial pins, I just forward out to to me. So I, that's how you can see that up on the screen, things like that. Um, GPS tracking device. Um, so this uses a serial GPS unit. I got this off Spark Fun. Um, can log data to an SD card, or or it can broadcast it out using cellular or XB or something like that. So you use it to track down stolen goods. So I know people have devices like this that they put inside their golf bag or, or whatever and then if someone steals it they, they just go and beat them up or whatever. And then uh, and, it, and also it can you see where people are. Like I have a cop who lives next door to me. He says that they put these devices on cars and they can track where they're going. They have to have, in Utah at least they don't have to have a warrant to do it. They just have to have reasonable cause that there's something suspicious going on. So I, and, but as far as me doing it I don't know if it's legal or not. So. Uh, another device is this blue smurf. It's really cool. So it's a serial device. It basically um, replaces a serial cable with this with Bluetooth. So if you have two Bluetooth on uh, Bluetooth on each side, then it's the same as a serial cable on between the two. Um, so default data rate is uh, 115k. Um, it can be used to program an Arduino if you just hook it up right. Arduino is programmed over serial, so any serial device can be used to reprogram it remotely. You can also use it to communicate with other Bluetooth devices. Um, so Fowler talked about this yesterday as well. So this is the blue smurf. This is a, a picture of a cop holding it where they found it inside of a, I think a pin pad of a gas station or something like that. Which it seems, seems a little bit silly to use this one because, I mean, the range is so small. It seems like you'd use an XP or something like that. But that's what the criminals used. So people are saying Spark Fun is bad because they made this device. That, but it's just silly, right? I believe they found it at a gas station in the keypad, so you swipe your card and you put your pin in. I believe that's where it was, something like that. Um, so another thing, so one thing that's kind of fun to do with this Bluetooth is this, uh, the Arduino and the Android project is called Armorino. So basically what this lets me do is, is I, I install this app on my, on my Android phone, then I put the blue, blue Smurf on, then I can, I can interact with my phone. I can, you know, make my phone interact with my Arduino remotely or wirelessly and vice versa. So events on my phone can trigger stuff on my Arduino and stuff on my Arduino can trigger events on my phone. So it's, it's a pretty cool little project. It's really, really easy to use as well with, with this Blue Smurf. Another thing you can do is you wire up to a, an iPod or an iPhone um, and then you can do serial commands too. So you can do things like dump out playlists. You can, you know, do all the, the remote things. The other thing to, the, that's fun to do is just try to send it just crazy crap and see what happens, see how it, how it likes that. Um, so another thing that I did um, is I put, I, so I used the XB shield and I, I thought, you know, it would be kind of cool. So I thought about two different things with, with a Cisco device. So I thought, well, you could either put an Arduino with an Ethernet shield inside of it, maybe use Relay so that, you know, when you're not, when you don't want to attack something, then it's working correctly. And then when you want to, uh, do something with it. You switch that port over so it's going to your Arduino you can, and you can mess with stuff. Um, another thing that I did with this one is I actually inside of this Cisco, inside of this Cisco router I've actually uh, opened it up and I've soldered to the bottom of the, the console pins. 